And so our roundtable uh, will be enriched today by the stories of Bernard Kloarek. Uh, good morning, Bernard. <laughs> of uh, Anne Bormans, uh, the business founder at Zephyr. Good morning, Anne. And Jean-Michel Pomé, who is the founder and CEO of Zeni. Good morning, Good morning. all. Uh, and so without further ado, I'd like to give our speakers a chance to introduce themselves and their startups. Uh, so uh, we will start with Bernard and uh, Aberactive. So Aberactive is a spin-off company of the Station Biologique de Roscoff, and our mission is to convey to everyone the benefits of seaweeds using uh, um, ex uh, enzyme-assisted extraction technology. So the company was incorporated um, well, uh, 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 two years ago. So we are three founders, uh, Robert Larocque, Gervin Michel and I. Uh, Robert is a specialist of enzyme expression. Uh, Gervin is a specialist of the marine bacteria that are associated with seaweed. And myself, I'm a specialist of seaweed. Uh, the, especially the biochemistry and physical chemistry of uh, matrix polysaccharides. So we are three members of the Station Biologique de Roscoff, at least we were. And so the, the challenge for us was to be transformed into entrepreneurs. So, well, it can be done. And so I, I just like, like, like that um, to, to know that we are uh, incubated at, uh, by Emergis Bretagne at the Station Biologique de Roscoff. So, uh, at the Station Biologique de Rossoff, precisely, we are specialists of algae, seaweed, and the marine bacteria that recycle the, the algal biomasses. So, the, the, these marine bacteria are, um, they have a lot of, uh, they have a, a very complete repertoire of um, marine enzymes. And um, so, we can, we can uh, rely on, on a complete tool of unique marine enzymes. So when, when you want to extract ingredients from marine seaweed, you can, there are several ways of doing. You can use uh, simple extract mixtures, physical chemical extraction, extraction followed by enzyme uh, chemical and, and uh, hydrolysis. And so we, we call them from first to third, gener three, third generation. So the problem with that is that it gives you, it, it yields uh, bioactives in low concentrations and they have quite a high energy cost. So we propose uh, a, a technology called breakthrough, which is a breakthrough, which is a cracking of seaweed with specific enzymes, enzymes specific from seaweed polysaccharide. So the, that yields uh, natural bi bioactives with new functionalities and it has a low energy impact because the enzymes work it at room temperature. So I'm ready to, to answer questions when, if you need. Thank you very much, Bernard. All right, and so we also have with us Anne of uh, Zephyr and Bormons. Hi, thanks for uh, inviting us. And um, yeah, I'm happy to share some, uh, some insights uh, of how we started uh, and making our dyes. I'm Anne, I'm the business founder of Zephyr, and we are making an industrial textile dye for the industry of textiles because it's something which we wear all day and we're probably sitting on some textiles and all those uh, textiles, they need some colors. So we think this industry needs to change. And uh, seaweed, uh, some people uh, know about seaweed, like Bernard, because his company is about seaweed, but a lot of people don't know that we have three types of seaweeds. We have the green, the reds, and the browns. And here in Europe, and uh, most of you are from Europe, we have a lot of brown uh, seaweeds, and we are very happy that we can uh, die with that. Next slide, please, uh, Lisa. Uh, within those three types of seaweeds, we have thousands of types of seaweeds. Some people say 10,000, some people say 30,000, but there is a lot of seaweed available so we can have a product. Next slide, please. Uh, because when you want to color the world and 
know that we all wear textiles all day, we need a lot of text and we need a lot of, of seaweed. So luckily there are a lot of seaweed farmers and they have seaweed available. So we started with some research. Uh, we started more than 10 years ago on, on a research can you dye with seaweed? Because you need to have everything in place for the industry. Next slide, please. And we saw that we could do that. So that's why we started a team, because you can't build a, a company without a good team. So we have people who can have all the context with the textile industry, but also the people in the lab and um, to make sure that we can introduce it to the market. If you can put it to the next slides, please. Uh, but next to a team, you also need to have a, a really a good reason why you put your uh, product in the market. And there is a lot of things are happening within the, the legal department and the regulations in Europe. And that means that we have to change the way we dye at the moment. Because most of your dyes, which you are all wearing at the moment, I can... I can put a bottle of champagne on it, but I, I'm really, I think that everybody is having clothes which are uh, dyed with petrol. And that's uh, really a synthetic dyes. And it's, uh, it's not good for our planet and it's not good for our health. So we need to change that. And luckily the regulations are going to make sure that we need that. Next slide, please. Um, so that's why we have a bio-based uh, uh, powder and liquid where we can dye with. If I can go to the next slide, please. Um, so we made a lot of samples because when you need you need coloring, so we made uh, the colors which are in trend and which are in need for the industry and which are available at the moment. If we can go to the next slide, please. But next to the colors, you also need to make sure that your colors can uh can work on the materials which the industry is using like the cottons and the wool and the linens and the silks and luckily we can uh, work with all those combinations if we can go to the next slide please so next to knowing that you have a good team knowing that you have a product you know that the industry needs your product you need to showcase it so we made a lot of showcases which we presented it in expos uh, in museums well on all kinds of occasions and um, to make sure that people can see it. If we can go to the next slide, please. Then we also did a lot of trials with the industry because um, when you're talking textiles, you can do it on the garment, you can do it on fabric, but you can also do it on yarns. And, um, and we did all kinds of pilots with, uh, with the industry to make sure that we can do that. And what we did is you can't do things alone when you start a startup. You really need people because you have a channel. You really are looking like in a tunnel and you had to get, get uh, you, ne you need people who, sh who uh, help you with pivoting your, your ideas, um, your finance, your legal stuff, everything. So go for accelerator programs. If possible, I can really recommend uh, the Blue Bio Value program in Portugal, which is opening at the moment. Please enroll. It's great. If we can go to the next slide, please. Um, and you need press because you need to be visible. You need to be visible in expos, on, on fairs, but also in the press, and it can really help you with your story. Uh, next slide, please. And um, yeah, and then you can have your product. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think, um, yeah, uh, yeah, we can make it without any chemicals and pesticides. And, and I think what is the really great thing about seaweed, it, it grows rapidly and it grows in our seas, which is salty. So we don't need any fresh water to grow our uh, raw material, which is, I think, uh, really a need our planet needs. If we can go to the next slide, please. Yeah. So, yeah, what we really hope is that we can have colors in a responsible way that everybody can wear them. All right. So, Jean-Michel, I'll pass the mic to you for Zeni. Yeah, that's very nice. Thank you for the invitation. I'm very happy to be there and uh, to uh, give some insight for Young and, uh, and others. Uh, it was a very good presentation before. And, um, yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, and uh, for what you uh, you did, because you uh, you went to a, a, a quite a, a high step and a nice marketing, which is necessary. Uh, marketing we often 
uh, forget that, but that's crucial. And uh, even if we are talking about biotech or whatever, it's essential to grow. Um, uh, so um, I'm uh, just to introduce myself very quickly. I'm a molecular biologist, and uh, since I was a child, um, I have had a passion for nature and environment. Um, I'm um, a farmer's grandson and grew up in the Mediterranean area where I realized without understanding the reasons uh, as a child that sea biodiversity was dramatically uh, decreasing in the sea. And today, um, with the knowledge through my career, I understand better the causes uh, of this loss of biodiversity. Um, I, I can be defined uh, um, as a serial entrepreneur with uh, over 20 years of experience in uh, applying microbiology, uh, nutrition and health and environment uh, with two main areas uh, of expertise, uh, microbiota and uh, microalgae. Um, because, um, yeah, uh, we, we talk about seaweed, uh, macroalgae, and uh, today it's uh, for, for me. It's a microalgae, uh, that a tiny algae that uh, uh, came in, um, I will say, uh, that they were the first uh, organism on Earth that provide oxygen. And today in the ocean with microalgae, with seaweed, uh, they provide about 50% of the oxygen we, we have. Um, and um, we tackle a big, big challenge. We uh, uh, tackle the eutrophication uh, issue, which is one of the major uh, environmental issues uh, after climate warming. And um, basically, Zeni is standing for zero nitrate, and uh, we are a nature-based solution that mimics uh, what is eutrophication. Uh, eutrophication is the uh, um, overdevelopment bloom of uh, uh, non-desirable algae. Uh, that kills the uh, um, aquatic medium. And uh, what we do is uh, uh, reproduce the uh, um, eutrophication in a control uh, system. And uh, um, basically what we, uh, uh, we aim is to uh, plug a kind of uh, aquarium uh, at the end of uh, uh, wastewater from industry and um, we particularly target industry that uh, deliver in, in, in water, nitrate and phosphate. And um, the, the big interest is that uh, we totally control the production of algae inside this uh, uh, effluent that are nutrient uh, for our algae. And very quickly, um, in between 24 hours and, and 48 around, um, we totally clean the water, uh, so we can reuse the water into uh, back to the uh, industrial process. And on the other hand, uh, we separate the microalgae biomass that can be reused into uh, um, uh, agriculture process uh, like fertilizer or uh, feed industry. So that's totally a circular uh, system. Um, so uh, here we are. We uh, um, we started uh, six months ago uh, after having worked on a, on a project uh, for around one, one year and a, and a half. And um, I uh, met my, uh, my team uh, one year ago. And uh, this is uh, what we, uh, we will talk about. The, the, having a great team is uh, absolutely essential. It has been already mentioned. And then I jump into the project um, with uh, uh, already a, a, a client in aquaculture. Because what I uh, forget to say is, uh, yeah, we target uh, aquaculture and the, the food industry, mainly the dairy and, and brewery. So there is a big, big task. So we need a big team. And uh, we have a, a three uh, people complementary team and already uh, two people that joined us. So I'm very happy to. Uh, to answer any question about uh, how to build that and, and to make uh, something uh, profitable and um, yeah and uh, to um, bring your patient into uh, entrepreneurship
Brilliant. Thank you, uh, and thank thank you all three of you for. Uh, I think what really comes out is is just how much you can do with this this broad category of algae, and it, it really takes entrepreneurship to bring that potential out. Um, and so uh, to kind of start the roundtable question, um, uh, if we think of these all these great businesses as as uh, superheroes, uh, we're going to be digging into your origin stories. Uh, and so if I under, if I've understood correctly, uh, it's you it's not enough to be bitten by a radioactive business person right? you you have to uh, uh, do some some more work than that. So let's say you are a student or a researcher and you're working on something in the lab. You say, this is fascinating, this is really interesting. More people should um, benefit from this. How do you go from that observation to someone with a business plan, someone with a, with a plan to make that, uh, that value come out? So Jean-Michel Anne, um, uh, what do you think about this? So what, what, what is it that makes fundamentally that uh, allows you to say, this is the part of uh, this idea, this is the part of what I'm doing that has value. This is how I can uh, uh, capitalize on that value. So. Yeah, with, with us, it really started with a designer, so not a researcher, but a designer uh, who was working within textiles and saw how polluting that industry was mm -hmm. and that it surely needed a change. Um, and she was just curious. So I think a lot mm -hmm. of things start with curiosity. And she was so curious when she was walking on the beach, she saw all the seaweeds because we have a lot of seaweeds on the beach, which is a huge problem in the Netherlands, like it is in Portugal and France uh, on the beaches. Mm -hmm. And she just took took it home and she tested it and, and started mm -hmm. with it. So I think it's your curiosity next to action. So you just have to start. And then she saw, it was possible. And then she did the research, well, how, how can I do it? And then afterwards it really comes because she was um, she was uh, having an exhibition in Centre Pompidou and all those big museums. Mm -hmm. And then there were really emails coming towards her, like, uh, can we buy your dyes? But she was still doing it handmade. And the handmade mm -hmm. process is totally different from lab and upscaling process. It's a different cookie, it's totally different. But we saw that there was a market. So that was our first mm -hmm. thing. And um, then somebody introduced me because we, within our team, we don't, we, we're not, we're, of course, we're friends, but we were not friends in the beginning. We, we didn't know each other. So it was really looking what we were needing in the company. So Ninka, our uh, creative founder, she was really like, oh, this is something I'm a designer. I can't do this, you know, this business mm. stuff. So I need somebody. So then somebody said, well, drink, have a cup of coffee with Anne because I think the two can be a match. And my mom was in textiles. So I, I really, well, I have a passion for textiles. So, um, so we had a coffee and then we said, well, well, we just give it a month. I will write a business plan and we just see. And it's just by looking everything up, all the numbers, uh, how the market was, how the textile market was, that I saw this is really something which can work because the textile market needed an alternative, but also the seaweed industry needs an alternative because there's a lot of side streams from a lot of uh, industries and we can, st we can still use it as a dye. So, so that started and then we saw that we were still missing somebody who knew a lot about textiles. So then Bianca joined and then we saw, of course, in the beginning as well, that we need somebody in the lab who could really upscale. And then we were just making a list and yeah, of course, called the first one on our list. And of mm -hmm. course, we're really happy that they joined and we are female found, which is not a belief. It's just it happened because we're all we're, we're now at the moment looking for a financial person in the management team. Yeah, uh, so you always have to look what are you still missing within the company mm. and we make a profile and then we go for it and and do your market research really, really good. Yeah. And also um, don't be afraid to pivot your ideas. That's really mm. important and that's something which you can really learn. And then it's and again, a big shout out to the Blue Bio Value program because it's the, it's the application started now. 
but look into accelerated programs. They can help you out because I think which can be really the, the, the worst thing is that, of course, you'll love your idea and you should love your idea, but don't love it too much mm. because be open to what people tell you because you, 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 you know, it's not a road which is straight. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so uh, be open to that. Yeah. I think that's uh, an important thing. Yeah. And know what you can do and what you can't do. That mm. I think that's the most important. And that's something when I start with the story of Ninka, she knew that a business plan, that's not something she could do. But she, mm. she knew that she needed that. So, yeah, I think that's uh, always an important thing. Yeah, always important to, to know what you don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and what you can and can, can't do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, one of those risks which maybe gives people um, some uh, some friction in the beginning is, is this question of, of money. And so how do you go about uh, so you've got this you've got this team with this common vision, you, you've uh, uh, got this goal. How do you go about talking to people who can back you financially? Um, it's always difficult to get money, but you need to have your financials in order because otherwise you don't have a company. It's the same with the legal department. You need to have your legal stuff in order. Um, uh, and, and, it's, and also in that way, it's asking, uh, it's, um, it's talking and it's uh, getting a lot of no's and getting also a lot of, a lot of yes, but also accepting that not everybody is a fit with your company and it's, 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 it's really your darling. You totally believe in it, but sometimes with investors, you're not a match because, uh, yeah, they're just different or they have a different view or they want to have like a really quick as exit or those kind of things. Um, and also you have also next to investors, you also have, of course, subsidies, uh, and grants, which can really help you, uh, in the beginning you have, uh, at least in the Netherlands, you have several, but you also have great European, uh, grants, which you can apply for. And that can help you really out because they uh, they, they they support you uh, mostly with half of it. So that's that's really great. And it's but also it's 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 accepting that not everybody likes your idea, and that's just how it is. And that's really hard. It's a hard uh, hard one to swallow sometimes. Um, so I see you, you've gathered this momentum. You, you know you've you've perhaps gotten a bit of financial backing. Uh, what challenges do you face? Um, when it comes time to bring your product or service to the market, um, is uh, is this something that that comes very very gradually, or is there uh, kind of a a new phase that 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 you enter into um, uh, when when your 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 product or service is is brought to the market? There is no rule. I mean, you can have a very slow uh, uh, growth. Uh, you can have a huge growth suddenly. And this is a point. This is, again, mm -hmm. adaptation. Um, we, we see, for example, that uh, for uh, Zeni, um, we are waiting for uh, changes in regulatory uh, for uh, the use of the reuse of water uh, after cleaning it. And this is crucial. So we mm -hmm. know that we have uh, something like uh, 40 prospects in the pipe. They all wait mm. for uh, the change in uh, regulatory. And this is uh, something I wanted to add that we quite mm -hmm. often forget when we start a business. Uh, the regulatory context is essential. And you need to uh, see that like the, the first point is if the regulatory are not in favor of your uh, new product, uh, this yeah this is gonna be a, a big big issue. So you need to verify that first, um, and then uh, what what I want to say is that um, if you have a big growth, you, you need to be prepared, and sometimes it's a, it's a big big challenge. So, uh, mm. um, but no rule. You don't know uh, at at the beginning of your. Uh, project whether it will grow fast or not that's the point so for before we go jean-michel and bernard what final words uh, of advice would you have for 
uh, someone who wants to follow in your footsteps uh, and wants to uh, uh, start a startup. For, for a young entrepreneur, I will say um, is uh, believe, believe in yourself and your dream um it is not an easy task and failing is part of the experience of uh, entrepreneur um we need to create uh, i think a new world uh, about all together and learn from both younger and uh, older generation uh, but definitely well i'm i'm uh, whatever the situation is i'm very optimistic and uh, pessimism is the main flow uh, of talk today okay so as far as I'm concerned, I'm thinking of the, the people that are in science uh, and that would like to to move to to entrepreneurship. And so the only thing I, I, I mean, the, or the main thing I'd like to say is that um, I mean, you need to explain to everybody. I mean, uh, different categories of people what what you believe in. And so my word would be, my advice would be, okay, you know, simplification is not necessarily lying. What I mean is that uh, you can simplify without without telling, I mean, by telling the truth also uh, anyway, but you need to, I mean, you, you need to explain simply what you are doing. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, I mean, as far as a scientist, as far, I mean, for scientists, it's a bit frustrating, but you have to go by, to go by that. Mm -hmm. And, and do you have any uh, parting words? Yeah, I think, uh, well, love your idea and act on it. Um, that's really important, but also really always ask advice from a board of advisors or accelerator programs. Always need advice because that's, I think, uh, that's really something which you should do. Have your fine financials in order and your legals in order. And um, yeah, pivot your idea all the all the time because um, uh, when we started in 2020, it was differently than when we are now, and that's something which you need to do. And also know that it's not a straight road. You 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 get a lot of no's and you get a lot of yes. So uh, so it's always uh, as Obama says, it's two steps ahead and a two one step forward, two steps back, and that that's how it is. But be positive and go for it and also um, build your team in the in the greatest way always go for the number one which you want to add in your team and always know what will be the next person you need to add uh, in your team because it's it's an ongoing uh, ongoing thing yeah and uh, and eat healthy and be healthy because it takes a lot of time <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's sometimes uh, things which people forget but uh, have your sleep and your uh, health in order yeah. Good, good words to the wise. And thank you so much, uh, all three of you, for for joining us, and uh, thank you all of us for uh, for all all of you joining us uh, for the webinar. Um, you know, I, I I think that was a a really lovely uh, discussion. I gave a a, a good uh, uh, a good look into to to what it takes uh, to really make your your projects become a reality. So yeah. Thank you so much. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.